so Michael Keller and Mike Prestwood Smith, you guys were uh, the re-recording mixers on Mary Poppins Returns. Um, given the big, uh, grand reputation that the original film had, uh, five Academy Award wins, landmark movie musical, beloved children's classic, did you guys feel any undue pressure about working on the 54 years in the making follow-up? Yeah. Uh, so I'll start, shall I, Mike? Um, yeah, you go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, there was a there's a lot of expectations on it, and I think um, we were all uh, cautious about treading on beloved material. Um, so uh, we we definitely bore that in mind when we when we went when we when we got to to work on it. I think we were keen to make sure it had uh, you know some of the charm and the, the and the and, and the vintage feel and classic feel of the original, um, but really. That was a lot of that was already done when we first watched it. Um, I remember thinking, I hadn't seen a movie a movie as charming and as and as and as and as classic feeling as this for a long, long time. It was something that I don't think you can really legislate for that. It just it just happens. I mean, Rob just shot a wonderful film. We and it we immediately felt it was right on the par with the original, albeit fifty four years later. But it it. Um, it was certainly a, a real pleasure to work on something that had that built in already. We, our job was really just to make it feel as 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 great as it looked and, and as wonderful as the performances were in it. You guys have both worked with uh, Rob Marshall before on some of his other musicals. Uh, explain, if you will, just sort of what your duties are as re-recording mixers when you're working on a movie musical. Yeah, well, we, we both share the, the mixing duties. I take care of music and dialogue uh, and and the vocal components of that as well. Uh, and Mike takes care of all the effects and foley and backgrounds. And uh, uh, we've worked on many shows together, Mike and I. Uh, that's always been our roles. And so we have a great shorthand that um, we've established over many years. And uh, yeah, we've worked with Rob. Uh, we did Into the Woods in 2014. And uh, I'd done nine with him, uh, I guess it was 2009 too. So there was already a great shorthand with Rob and his aesthetic as well, um, which is an enormously helpful thing to have. Right. So tell us just a bit about some of the added challenges that might have faced you guys on this movie, you know, movie musical, lots of special effects, period film, things like that. Can you just dive in a bit about, you know, some of the added challenges you might have faced yeah. on it mike i just i'll just start off with maybe yeah, you, you, could... you start with your what what your yeah. challenges were and then I okay just... yeah well you know it's it's interesting i was thinking about this um when we started it it's a kind it's it's sort of several movies in one uh, it's it's a musical first and foremost which has its own challenges in that um you know there's a there's a sort of uh disbelief that you have to overcome you have to let your audience understand that their actors are going to sing at them uh, especially with with rob's films a lot of the narrative is tied up in the vocal so it's it's it's, it's about getting the audience over the hurdle of just accepting uh, the fact that it's a musical and and the complexities of weaving the vocals in and out of dialogue in particular it's very i think he's got a very particular way of making his musicals that are rather different to a lot of others and a lot of other musicals are a bit more straight up sort of performance driven <coughs> excuse me Whereas Rob's, the narrative is very much part of the vocal, of the vocal, and so we're in and out of vocals and back into into dialogue the whole time. So that's that's a huge technical challenge, but also a, a difficult challenge in terms of getting an audience to just run with it. So, and there, there's a lot of complexity with that. But this this is more than that. It's it's a big animated film, so it has its technical uh, challenges just with the animation and and getting the animation to feel integrated and real and um having that all live in the same world as the as the as the as the physical performances from actors so that was another component to factor in and you could argue it's an action movie in many ways there's some big set pieces um a lot going on there's a big chase sequence uh, the the end of the film is a, there's a lot going on so it's a very different movie uh, in insofar as it it, it really does have a lot of different parts to it that make it made it made it a, a big challenge um uh as opposed to just a straight up any one version of those movies was one thing but um yeah 
I, I'd say those those are the main. That was the main difference between uh, this and anything else I'd done. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, yeah, Mike's have... absolutely Mike's absolutely right. It's it's basically three movies. You got a musical where you have to understand all the lyrics and uh, you know uh, vocals might be recorded on the set or pre-records or post-records. And then uh, uh, you might have uh, like the animated sequences, which is basically a animated feature. And then you have a, an action set piece. And so where Mike goes in and he needs to interweave the dialogue and the lyrics and vocals, be it pre-records or on-set vocals or post-records and make that as seamless as he can. Then once that sits properly, then my job is to weave the sound effects and the backgrounds and the foley around it, which is kind of the support to what Mike has done. And so it's a it's a it's a back and forth. It's like a, a big knitting fest where he starts with the dialogue and the music, and then I come in with Rene Tandelli and Eugene, who were our supervising sound editors, and we massage their material around the dialogue and the music tracks. And then once I've done my pass, Mike comes back in to finesse his you know, his uh, dialogue and, and, and score. They're all really very uh, uh, reliant upon each other, all these components. Uh, a lot of the believability of, of the performances, in t especially in terms of the vocal, uh, you know, hang on, they're very, it's like a tightrope, they hang on very small, subtle components to, to lull the audience into believing that it's all real. You know, what Mike does, in particular with Foley and backgrounds is, is it's really quite subtle in places where, and it's quite complex just to get that to feel like it's real, uh, especially when you're dealing with animation and as well as, as well as a, a sort of musical component to get all of that acceptable. So an audience really never questions it is, is a, a complicated process for sure. You both have mentioned the animated sequence quite a bit. Um, can you just explain a little bit uh, more in depth why that is so, uh, complicated? Well, uh, you know, it's because it's not real. <laughs> and quite simply, it's every single sound that is there is created and has to feel integrated. And to add to that, you are putting in sounds, uh, performances from actors that are real, dialogue and vocals that are potentially real. And so you have to constantly match those, that ambience, that aesthetic, uh, with the sounds that you're putting in there and to make it feel like it's a, um, a genuine world that we're all living in. You know, all of the all of the creatures, all of the animals that are in the Royal Dalton Hall <clears throat> are all singing and cheering and applauding, applauding and singing along with the, with the songs. And you you want to ever you, you want to be drawn into that. You don't want that to ever feel like it's not part of what you're seeing. It has to all be balanced to make it feel like it's uh, actually happening you know and that, and that's complex because you don't really have anything to to start with to hold it together to say well this is real uh, let's go from there everything has to be balanced mm -hmm. and in terms of how do you uh prioritize or decide you know what we're going to hear when i mean you know you you mentioned dividing up your work and massaging it and things like that so you know i mean how do you decide all right this is a moment where we need to hear the music a little bit more. This is a moment where we need to hear effects a little bit more. I mean, do you have disagreements about that kind of stuff? I couldn't possibly never, tell you. Never, was, uh... no. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Mike, you start. No, Max, you have the music department, you know, that consists out of, just out of five or six people. Then you have this that, that have a bunch of, uh, that have a bunch of guys that are, that want to protect their sound effects and then you have the dialogue department that wants to hear the dialogue and so it's up to us to do our first pass to get it into a rough shape and uh then you pick and pick and choose because these pictures are so visually stimulating that you can't really play everything all the time and you just experiment you go through and especially the chase you know obviously it's a music also dialogue and music is king uh, to get going and then we work around it and carve intentional holes here and there that you know sometimes you might just see it hear it and then if you cut away you artificially drop the sound effects more to clear from music and and it is quite time consuming it takes weeks to get that in good shape and then 
you know, sometimes people come in and they hear they hear first pass and somebody like Rob that sits back and looks at a scene and says, that plays great at a scene, but somebody that might have worked on that scene for six months, they might say, well, where's all of that sound? Or the music department might say, well, you know, we had a couple overdubs here and we can't hear those. So it's a, it's a give and take. You, you can't really play everything all yeah. the time. Often, the, uh, I'd, I'd also argue that, you know, you come to these things with everything. You know, everything's covered, everything's there. But I mean, the, 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 the film has a habit of dictating what's required. You know, it has a habit of, uh, of, of when you're really there focusing on the story, what's the important story point here? What are we trying to say at every given frame? What's, what's, what's going to help us, help the audience understand what's going on? What's going to provide tension or drama or intrigue or those things? And I think you're constantly looking for those emotional beats, but also, uh, to add to Mike's theory behind it, you know, a big musical number, especially, but any 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 film really, music, and the way it's orchestrated and 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 the way it beats out, often dictates how events sound wise occur around it. You know, often a big chase will have big music on it, so you you're trying to find the phrases that are important so that you can get the feeling that music's driving it without ever taking the effects away. But, and then once the phrase is done, you might go into a section where the effects sort of lead. So it's a, it's a real uh, dance between those things, especially in high density areas, as we've had, you know, we have in this, but it sort of normally informs you as you, as you go through it. <laughs> yeah, you learn, you learn as you go through and you hear yeah. all the elements. Right. You guys have worked on a variety of, of different kinds of movies. Uh, I mean, just in the last couple of years, you know, you guys have worked on things like Mission Impossible Fallout earlier this year or, uh, you know, Justice League and, you know, these big kind of action films. So how does working on something like this compare to working on something like, like that? Uh, well, it, a, a musical effect scene is much harder because you need to hear the words where if you have you know, Mike's Fallout or for me, Justice League, people aren't really talking while there's stuff flying and exploding, where in our movie, they're singing. So you got to constantly protect the dialogue and shape around that. And, 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 and that's the ultimate challenge on a musical that has a lot of sound effects and, and score driving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you know, I think every every film has its challenges. It's, <clears throat> it's really about it's, it's, it's people as well. It's, it's, uh, you know, Rob is Rob, the martial art director, is extremely organized, very clear in his vision. He's he's really one voice. Um, <clears throat> and um, having that, it makes, makes it easier to put this together. Mm -hmm. Because the aesthetic is absolutely given. It's we know what we know, we kind of know what he, he wants. I think often when it gets complicated is when you have a committee of people or you have a lot of moving parts or, or, or story that's not really working. Uh, and that's when I think things become difficult to do. The, the actual mechanics of putting, uh, say, a Mission Impossible and a, and a Mary Fucking Returns together, the processes is, is, aren't fundamentally different. It's just the, the workflow and how you get there is, is, is all about the people you're with, you know. We, and we had an amazing team on this uh, they, they were the same team we had on into the woods pretty much and we had a great shorthand and we got to we got to a pretty good place very quickly because we all knew exactly which road we were going down you know um yeah that really helps do you guys have a favorite moment from the movie that you could point to you know where you say ah that's an example of our work um at its very best I, you know, the the bit, one of the bits I love the most, it really is the simplest piece when the kids do uh, uh, nothing's nothing's really lost uh, when they do their little reprise of that um, song to to Ben Wishaw. It's a, it's like a thirty second, 60, 50 second little piece of music where uh, it just breaks my heart every time I watch it. Um, so it's hard to say. You know, I, I'm very proud of the uh, of the whole music hall section particularly. And I, and I think the work that Foley and, uh, uh, and the choreographed work that went on with the Trip the Light was, was awesome. Yeah. Every time I watch that, I kind of go, wow. Yeah, I'm, that's my favorite, yeah. Yeah, I'm hearing everything I want to hear and it's, I'm, I'm never overwhelmed. I'm never, it's all, I'm always clear with the dial of the vocal and yeah, 
I've got this huge sort of set piece just laid in front of me. It's, it's yeah, there's some great moments. Absolutely. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time and congratulations you. on the movie. Uh, it may have taken a while to get a sequel to this, but it was well worth the wait. <laughs> thank you both. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. You're Bye. welcome.